it's upstairs. Oh, Hello, everyone. Hey, Sam. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, how you doing? All right, I'm doing great. How you doing? Good. All right. So where are you where are you coming from? Philadelphia. Philly. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um where you where you where you uh calling in from? From Utah. Oh Utah, okay. Yeah. All right. Is it getting cold? Is it getting cold out there in Philly? Yes, yes, it's cold today, but it was uh nice yesterday. Right on, right on. What uh so so tell me a little bit about your podcast, what you do and yeah, well, well, most of my um, audience are entrepreneurs and, and business owners. Right on. Uh, you know, they're into direct sales. But when I came across your impressive resume, I said, uh, I got to get Sam Taggart on my platform so he can convey value to my audience about direct sales and uh, the power of marketing. I love it. I love it. Yeah, dude, I'm passionate about direct sales. That's that's kind of my, my niche as well. Um you know, a lot of people are all about like social media. And I mean, we do a lot of that, but like not, um, not a lot of people are like, go knock doors, like go freaking grind, go talk to random people, like cold call, like, you know what I mean? Like you got to put in the reps. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I was, I was talking to a great friend of mine. Uh, his name is uh, Gordon Bazaar. 
he's the famous, unfamous person you ever want to meet. <laughs> and uh, he's done a lot of business with Tony Robbins and marketing and group with Jay Abraham. Uh -huh. And he's had over 350,000 students that graduated from his business programs. Uh -huh. So um, he went to your website and he was very impressed by what you're doing in the direct sales space, the entrepreneurial space. And uh, he wanted to see if y'all can do a, a conference call to see how y'all can create value for one another. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd love to um, connect and network and and thank you. Yeah, thanks for thinking of me, man. I'm still just trying to get started. So. Okay. All right. Because he actually specializes in the, the private equity sector. Oh, really? That's mm -hmm. cool. We just started tapping into that. Like we started kind of buying and syndicating some private equity deals with some mm -hmm. big solar companies. So it's been kind of fun. Um, anyway, I, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm, I'm all about learning and, and, and putting together big deals. So. All right. You want me to set that up uh, through your uh, powerful assistant? Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. All righty. All right. You ready to rock and roll? I'm ready to rock, man. All righty. Good morning, everyone. This is Arthur Robinson Jr. I'm the creator and the host of the Powerful Interviews podcast show. And today I have another special interview for each and every one of you. Today I have a wonderful person on the show. He's a great friend of mine. His name is Sam Taggart. For those that don't know Sam, let me explain to each and every one of you about this incredible, phenomenal man. Sam Taggart, he is the founder and CEO of D2D Conference Bootcamp. He specializes in direct sales and he specializes in recruits and he knows how to identify leaders in the business industry. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the one, the only, the powerful Sam Taggart to the show. Thank you. Glad to be on it. Well, I'd like to thank you, Sam, for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate me and the audience worldwide about the power of direct sales and the power of marketing. I gladly appreciate it. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here to serve, here to give. To everyone that's listening and watching right now, I highly recommend go and get your pen and your pad right now. My great friend Sam Tagg is going to break down layman's terms about the power of direct sales. Is that correct, Sam? Yep. Now, what I'd like to know, and can you explain to the audience in layman's terms, who is the phenomenal Sam Taggart? How long have you been in your powerful industry and what is your expertise? Yeah, so I, I uh, been knocking doors since I was 11 years old and, you know, I started painting the addresses on the curbs, um, did that all through the through high school. So if you're, you know, have a, have a teenager or you're looking to make some quick cash, that's a great way to do it. You just go and, you know, knock a door 20 bucks. I'll paint the curb and, uh, you know, quick cash. Right. And I, 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 found myself really loving that all through high school. And I, I got 11 of my buddies working for me. Um, we call ourselves the Gutterman, And I was making really good money kind of growing up because my, my parents, they were very in the business of like, hey, if you want a phone, if you want a car, go get it, you know, go figure it out. And uh, anyway, so I graduated high school and I got into selling alarm systems in Dallas, Texas. And this was back in 2008. And then, um, and then every year I just kind of worked my way up in, in, in the ranks. And, um, you know, 2014, I was the number one sales rep of Vivint. Um, I managed, you know, 70, 80 guys there and they're the largest security or they're the largest door-to-door -door sales company in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, uh, anyway, so then I got into the solar space back in 2015 and I was a VP of sales of a solar company, built that to six different states and, you know, about a hundred and something salespeople um, from the ground up. And, um, and ever since then, I've just, I've been on a mission to unify up level and bring honor and integrity to the door to door space. So about three years ago, I uh, started a conference, DDDCon, where um, we're going on our fourth year come this January. So January 8th and 9th in Salt Lake City, Utah, we have David Goggins, John Maxwell, uh, Ed, Ed, uh, Ed Milet spoke last year. This year I have Bradley, Tim Story, um, Hal Elrod. We've had like Jordan Belfort. We've had, you know, some awesome speakers. And, and, and the mission was to really put all these competitors that are all fighting in the streets together and, um, you know, out there hustling. And, 
you know, Jordan Belfort said it. He was like, dude, I've never spoke to a crowd of such powerful, hungry hustlers. And I believe like the true grit, like the door to door guys that are willing to go stick it out and get their face kicked in day in and day out. Like those are the true grinders, the guys that are cold calling, the guys that are willing to like, you know, eat what they kill, not on a salary, not on a lead baby. They go create their own business. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're hard to come by, but there's a community, there's a tribe there. And now we have tens of thousands of people using our trainings and on our Facebooks and our, um, you know, so since then we've consulted and trained and spoke at and, you know, written books and done all sorts of cool stuff to really impact the, uh, the space. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Mm. Now I interviewed the powerful, the real Brad Lee, and uh, he was definitely dropping bombs yeah. on my podcast show. And uh, he's a phenomenal entrepreneur. Now, you do live events and live seminars. Now, your live events and live seminars, do they actually specialize in direct sales yes. and marketing? Yep. So, um, you know, a lot of like, like this event coming up, we have all sorts of workshops on recruiting, on, you know, building your marketing and brand to finance, real estate, investing, what do you do with your money, how to business strategy, um, you know, because with the direct sales, it's like a lot of what you do is build teams, train those teams, motivate them to keep working. How do you have a culture to where people wake up in the morning and they're excited to go get like go go hit the streets and whatever that is or B2B or D2D or however that looks and you know, so really the, it's kind of taking the industry juggernauts and saying, can they give feedback and, and, and training? You know, we have Mike, um, who is, you know, he's the sales coach guy that he crushes, John Marone. There's uh, Travis um, Chappell speaking in a workshop. He's like Build Your Own Network. He has a massive podcast. And, you know, we, we, we really are trying to find ways to service all, all elements of the direct sales space, because it's not just how to close a deal, right? And I train a lot on that. Um, I wrote a book called ABCs of, of Closing, mm -hmm. but, it, it, but it's really the, the leadership of how to get your people to close more deals, how to get better training systems, how to get better recruiting systems, how to get better onboarding systems, because a lot of people, they, they, you know, they, they get into direct sales and then they try to recruit direct sales and their turnover is super high. You know, the guys aren't making the money as they promised. It's like, oh, the sky's the limit. You can make as much as you want. And uh, they end up making less than they would be making in Chick-fil-A. And it's like, no, that's not the point. So it's how do we how do we change that? How do we give you the tools, the training, the knowledge, the leadership on how to avoid bringing in a, you know, an innocent soul that wants to shift their career because they've been in a mechanic forever. And they're like, I've heard you can make more money selling. And then they flop because your leadership ability isn't there. And that's what we want to help help support. Mm. Now, you built a multi-million dollar brand in the direct sales industry. Now, what would you say to the entrepreneurs and business professionals where they're saying that direct sales is dead? And do you believe that direct sales is dead? And how is your business holding up during the COVID pandemic? Um. Well, I hope that they keep thinking that because mm. those that aren't thinking that have doubled, tripled, quadrupled this year in business. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that everybody moves online. I hope everybody just moves to, you know, the ad spends just get more and more expensive because I spend zero dollars on marketing. If I'm running a, a roofing company or a solar company or a whatever company, um, I would say spend zero dollars because I can go beat anybody in the street. Like I can, I could wake up today and go throw in five deals and I could generate a hundred thousand dollars revenue today just by banging doors. And I could go spend maybe five, 10 grand of ad spend today. And I, that doesn't guarantee me anything. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, wait for the phone to ring, please. And I, I'm all about marketing. I, I have a very big marketing team. I have seven marketers. I have, you know, like spend a lot on ads every, every month. And, um, but I, I believe that there's a carnivore mentality and there's an herbivore mentality. And I'm not against being an omnivore where you can be in the, in, in the middle. Mm -hmm. But I think that in today's world, people are dying in the sense of the carnivorous like bone inside of them saying, are you willing to go hunt? Are you willing to go grind? Are you willing to go like find it? Or are you just waiting for like 
the plants to grow in front of you and just kind of like, oh, I'm going to mosey around and pick up these leads and hope they work out. Like, I, I, I like the grind. I like the hunt. So um, I, it is, is it dying? No. <laughs> um, I think COVID was one of the biggest years ever in history, at least for the door-to-door -door space. Um, pound for pound per rep averages were up by like 30% which is crazy, meaning like per, per person, they on average sold about 30% more this year because people are home, people are bored, people are, I don't know, they're, maybe they're coping with buying more. I, don't, I have no idea, but it was, it was the biggest year in history that I've seen. In our company, we've grown by like 500%. So, mm. so your top line revenue constantly increased month after month? A lot. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Sam, can you explain to the audience what is the best advice that you have ever received? That's a great question. Um, the first one that comes to my mind, I mean, I've gotten a lot of advice, um, is if you don't know what to invest in, invest in yourself. I think a lot of people are afraid to invest and then they don't invest in anything. And, you know, they have money laying around and they're like, oh, I don't want to like lose it. So I'm going to like stock it away under the mattress. And I find a lot of people are afraid to really take big moves investing in themselves. Like, you know, mm -hmm. putting out some meaningful dollars and saying, I'm going to go to a seminar. I'm going to go to a coach and, and have them coach me. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to learn, you know, it's like we go to college. It's almost like, it's almost like school broke our education, if that makes sense. And, you know, we get bitter because it's like, I spent 30 grand going to college and I can't tell you one thing I learned in college. <laughs> I'm like, well, what if you were to spend the 30 grand on something that's directly applicable to what you actually are doing right now in the moment. And, you know, my buddy's building a house right now. And I'm like, you're building your own house. Like, how do you know? He's like, YouTube. And I was like, wow. He's like, he's learning a new skill. I'm like, I would never build my own home, but he wants to develop a, a, a worthwhile skill in life. And what's cool is the element of education is just at your fingertips. Like we have everything you need to learn from all the gurus and the coaches and the online courses and the in-person courses. Like too many people think that they finished educating themselves when it came to finishing college. And then they're wondering why they're stuck in life is because they're not, they don't know how to learn. They never learned how to learn. They never learned the power of investing in the right things. They just put the money in college because that's what society told you to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like life told me to put money in college. So I'm doing that, but they never learned to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think uh, that would be my number one advice is get better at learning and invest in yourself because I promise that applied knowledge can create much more wealth than anything else in your life. Yes, Absolutely. I don't believe that knowledge is power. I believe that the implementation of knowledge, that's what makes it become powerful. Exactly. And uh, when you mentioned about college, it's about basically, you know, what you do with that information. But then a lot of people saying it's a big scam. And uh, a lot of, I know a lot of people, they went to college, but then they're not actually landing the professions that they actually went for. And now they like, you know, 80,000, over $100,000 in debt. And then you got to ask yourself, does what you're going for or what you're taking up in college in terms of your skill set, when you graduate, is that skill set going to supersede the loan amounts that you're going to owe? Yep. And if it don't add up, then maybe you need to, you know, think of a new business model, how you're going to generate income for you and your family. Yep. Now, you pretty much are dominating the social media space with the d2d experts platform which that is your brand so would you say that your brand is your promise yeah i guess that's a good way to put it um i've never never said it that way but you know it's funny i tell my people we have four core values at d2d one is innovation contribution unity and the last one is experience mm -hmm. and i'm really big on the word experience because I feel like a brand is an experience. It's like when people watch our stuff, when people come to our event, when, when I get, they, you know, I have guys in Vegas right now, I have a guy in Ohio right now, I have a guy in Cali right now that are out training companies. 
Mm. As I, I remind them, I say, I want them to ask themselves, I want you to ask them at the end, like, what was your experience? Like, you know, I, I can give you good content, but it's like, did you, did I take you through an experience? Did I, did, was this an experience that you'll always remember? And did this experience move the needle in your business and your life and your, you know, not just sales, but in, in anything in your life. And obviously we help companies. I mean, we, we've had clients this year, 10, 20 times their businesses and like unbelievable growth, like more than I was even like, I was like, oh yeah, if we triple quadruple, that's pretty normal. I'm like, holy crap. Like we just took you to the moon. And, you know, but I'm like, it, it was funny. Cause like one of them, he goes and buys this $50,000 Rolex. Cause he doesn't, he's a 25 year old cat that doesn't know what to do with the millions of dollars he's making this year. Mm. And I'm like, well, stop buying. Like, what are you doing? Why are you buying a Rolex? Take it back. And I, I made him take his Rolex back and I sent him three or four properties. And I said, I want you to buy these. And mm. he goes, what? And I was like, my business, my job is not to coach you on just making millions of dollars. My job is to coach you on keeping that millions of dollars. Yesterday I did a podcast with tax, tax consultants that, that, that teach on tax savings. I mean, they personally saved me over 150 grand on taxes mm. just by analyzing you know, a couple things in a week. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, cool. $150,000 I get to keep that I was going to give to the government. Like, that's a big deal. Like I want to go to companies and say, you didn't pay me to tell you how to do save on your taxes. You didn't pay me how to get into real estate. You didn't pay me how to, how to change your fitness or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this, like the experience we give here at DDD is you're going to get way more value because of our brand and our identity and who we, what we stand for than just, hey, let me give you some cool tips and tricks and training on how to recruit, how to sell and how to grow your company. Like um, we believe going much more above and beyond. Mm. You said that your brand goes up and beyond. So once people like you, respect you and know you, that's when their minds are made up and they want to invest in you because you are your brand. Yep. Mm. Wow. Yeah, because people, it's so funny, like, I have competitors that are like popping up. Like, I don't even look at them as competitors. It's funny. Like they're like our friends and I'm like, good. Like, let me coach you. Like, like, the, they're, like I'm like coaching my competition now, mm -hmm. um, which most people are like, what, why would you do that? But it's funny because I, I'm, I'm like, the, the problem is, is there isn't anyone like me. Like I look at it as like, I am a part of this brand and no one speaks like me. No one delivers like me. No one is going to help you like me. No one has got the content like I do. And, and, and I'm not trying to say I'm the best. I'm just saying I'm unique. I am me, you know? And I, um, I think a lot of people when they're selling, they don't realize that people buy you more than anything. I'm like, you have me go sell insurance. You got me going selling a car. You got me going selling whatever it is. I'm not like, like it's a widget. It's like, whatever you get me. And I think so many people, they underestimate the power of like, when you and I connect and I, and I, and I deliver a good podcast or you, you guys are listening to this and you're like, wow, I like this guy. Mm. All of a sudden you're going to have some value for me. You're going to be like, I'm going to follow Sam. I'm going to, I'm going to see what, what else he's got. It's the same thing in selling. You know what I mean? Like I have an experience that I get to take you through if I'm selling you a car. And then all of a sudden you're going to be like, man, I feel obligated to buy from you. Like I like you. And there's a law of reciprocation here. You get, you deliver a good experience. They deliver you some money. Mm. Wow. So basically it's a value exchange. Yep. I deliver a phenomenal product and a service in exchange. That's when your customers will pull out their debit or credit card and want the value that you deliver to them because they know you're delivering the goods. Yeah, but even more so than just the goods, it's the experience of how you delivered the goods. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like I could have, like, I'll give you an example. I, I wanted to buy a car and there was three lots that had the same car, right? Mm. So I'm looking up online. I go to the first lot thinking, well, as long as the price makes sense, I'm going to buy this car. I already know I want it. So the sales guy literally has to do nothing. Like, dude, just don't mess it up. It's yours to lose. Like I came to buy this car. And he sucked so bad because he just was like, here's the keys. Good luck. You know, let me know what you think. And I was like, I know I, I know I want this car though, but I don't like my DNA. 
I'm like, because you didn't even try, I feel like out of alignment giving you the sale. Mm. And I was like, your experience that you gave me sucks. So I was like, I, I gave him feedback because this old guy's been working there like maybe six months. And I was like, hey, I know you're probably, sounds like you're new, but the problem is, is you don't know what experience I'm looking for. So you didn't even ask, you didn't even, you didn't walk me through it. You didn't say, let me sit down and tell you about it. Like you just were like, here's the keys. Let me know what you think. And so I, I leave, I said, I can't buy from you at a principal, even though I want this car. And he's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like just my DNA. Like I can't, it's, it'd be out of alignment to buy it from you because you suck. And he was like, oh, and I was like, I hope you take this as positive feedback because, you know, for the next person that comes through, I don't want you to do the same. So I got to go and I go to the next lot and I show up and I was like, hey, I want to buy this car. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. He throws me the keys. I go, damn it. I'm not even going to test drive it. I just test drove it at the other lot. I was like, you failed. I go to the third lot. I'm like, I want to buy this car. It's the third lot I've been at. Can you please sell me the car? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. Do you want to like, hey, I'll ride in, hop in. Where do you want to drive? Where do you want to go? And he's like, let me tell you about it. Do you know all the engine specs? Do you know all the, like, is there a specific color? I was like, yeah, I want a red one. He's like, okay, I got a red one. And, you know, and like, it was very much like an experience. And I go, thank you. But it was, it showed me the contrast. The goods and the product was the exact same. It's a Ford F-150. I could get one in so many different places. That's the most common truck in the planet. And I was like, I just care that it's red. And I care that I value the value of the experience that you delivered me the goods with. Mm. And I think customers aren't going to tell you that, mm. but they're thinking it. Absolutely. You know, there's no substitute for experience. So, you know, with your sales team and your marketing team, they have to, you know, deliver a lot of value where your customers and clients are experiencing that value. And then in addition to that, Basically, you know, they're campaigning for you and saying, you know, I like Sam Taggart and his team. They deliver so much value. Y'all need to be educated and uh, value the experience that him and his company is actually going to give you, especially if they're in the direct sales industry. Exactly. Sam, let's have a conversation about entrepreneur. Now, the word entrepreneur means entrepreneur. And it was a Latin word. And it was invented in the 15th century in France. And a gentleman by the name of John Baptist, he invented the word. And over 300 years later, that word still exists, which is entrepreneur. So entre means between and pandre means to take. So it means to take lower productivity and increase it to higher productivity. Can you explain to the audience how you're increasing your productivity in your businesses? Interesting. I've never heard it that way. Um, I, so I'm on a huge, huge like trip right now about uh, time efficiency and leverage. I wrote a planner and I'm an advocate of, of planning, right? So, you know, every day, if you, you open up my, my planner, you're going to see, I've, I've mapped out like what I'm doing today. So like today book flights is on there, <laughs> you know, like I know what's happening mm -hmm. and, um, what happens is I think an entrepreneur where they don't increase productivity is they are wearing too many hats and they're ending up being busy versus productive. And they're ending up trying to juggle $15 an hour tasks when their value is probably a thousand dollar an hour value that they need to be doing. So I, I call this time value paranoia, meaning, you know, you're worth a thousand dollars an hour because if you go close a big client or if you go, you know, get a, you know, X, Y, Z, you're making a thousand dollars an hour or whatever the number is, but what you end up doing. So I, I was coaching this girl yesterday and she's starting an electrolysis business. It's like a hair removal. And she, I sit down and she's like, look at these business card samples. And I look at her and I go, oh my gosh, this is the common pitfall most entrepreneurs fall into. And she's like, what do you mean? And I go, most entrepreneurs spend weeks coming up with their cool business card and their cool website and they're cool that you know what I mean and I go you don't need a freaking business card girl what you need to do is start selling like what you need to do is start like putting together like a, your plan to actually go execute and go, go make money like you, and, and what ends up happening I'm like I would rather pay somebody five bucks to go figure out my business card problem mm -hmm. instead of me spend two weeks figuring out my business card problem mm -hmm. and I'm using this as the analogy because you know, you're like, well, I already got my business card. I'm like, no, that the point is, 
is whether it's sending emails. Yesterday, I literally gave my team my phone for five hours. It was so funny. This girl calls me. She's like, hey, how come you haven't texted me back? I was like, because I haven't had my phone in five hours. And she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, my team sent probably 60, 60 text messages from my phone yesterday as me, pretending to be me, to different coaching clients. They sent, you know, their they're they're handling like i don't want to sit there and message all my clients and be like hey how are you doing man like everything good no like i just want to reply to whatever they respond to me but i don't want to send the initial message but now they feel like i touched them and i i've th thought of them and i i'm there engaged right mm -hmm. but for me to take an hour out of my day to go send 60 text messages it, it you know my my administrative assistant i'm paying her to do that it costs me way more like <clears throat> she can't do a podcast for me, but she could send those text messages for me. Does that make sense? And so building team and leveraging time and saying, how am I being doing everything today in the most high productive activity versus getting trapped in all of the meanest busy activities. And that's how you increase production is you put the right people, the right seats on the bus and you make sure you're leveraging those seats to their fullest capacity. Mm. That is absolutely true. You have to leverage what you currently have in your business. And you have to express that to your team leaders as well as to your current clients. Let's talk about delegation. Now, the minimum wage of a millionaire is around $524 an hour. So I always tell my audience, what can you delegate for $524 an hour? Or you can go way beyond that. What can you delegate that's within your current budget? How important it is for entrepreneurs and business owners to delegate tasks out that they're not currently good at so they could just focus on increasing their revenues in their businesses? Great question. It's one extremely important. I mean, I, I have, it's funny, like everybody, the, the problem is, is people, it goes back to investing, right? Mm -hmm. Many people are afraid to invest. They've never taken money and invested it. So when they start an entrepreneur, they realize, oh, I need to wear all hats. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I don't want to spend the money to go delegate and hire people and have to pay them, you know, piece rate, salary, whatever it is, hourly. And if I go spend that 30, 40, 50, 100 grand on this person, that means I'm not making 100 grand. It's $100,000 less that I'm making this year. And so they're like, I would rather take on all of these $100,000 tasks, a year person that's going to do this or 50,000 or 30,000, whatever it is. And I'm going to take all this on. But what ends up happening is their income remains at 100,000 because they're doing the $100,000 job. You want to be a millionaire you got to be doing the millionaire jobs right you got to be doing the things the millionaire does and you got to be willing millionaires all have people under them that are doing the, the hundred thousand dollar a year jobs the fifty thousand dollar a year jobs mm -hmm. that's what millionaires do so if you want to be a millionaire if you want to act like them you want to be like them you've got to do the things that they would have done and you know i look at the first year and a half of my business i took zero dollars luckily i was in a position because of direct sales i made meaningful investments in real estate and, you know, passive income properties and things like that, that I was okay taking a year and a half off. Why? Because I put all my money back into my people. Now I have close to 40 employees. I, you know, like I, I'm all about saying, how do I build new departments and how do I create new, new programs and new teams and new, you know, and new, new strategies to where like, I'm not booking the flight. I'm not sending the ads. I'm not writing the copy. I'm not making the video edits. I'm not doing the posts. I'm not following up with customers. I'm not closing customers. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, how am I doing things that are going to get our business moving in the right direction? And it takes people. Mm -hmm. And the faster you learn that, and the faster you learn how to manage those people and delegate in the right way, you know, a lot of people hire an administrative assistant and then the administrative assistant, there's twiddling their thumbs because just because you have the person doesn't mean you're actually leveraging the person and actually delegating it. You're still doing all the things and she's over here or he's over here. Like, come on, like I, I want stuff to do. And you're like, well, no, I got it. And you're like, oh, you're not competent enough. It's like trust and empower your people, mm -hmm. trust and empower your people, have a system of accountability and a scorecard and let them, let them run say, and, and, and if they can do it 80% as good as you, then let them do it. 
nobody's going to do it 100% as good as you because they don't have your brain. They're not thinking the way you think. But if they can do it 80% as good as you, let them do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, a lot of big brands, they really rely and depend on people strengths that can increase their revenues and their current companies. It's like with uh, Steve Jobs, uh, you know, before he passed away, he had $119 billion in the bank cash liquid. So they took the Apple brand to a whole nother level within five years. You know, then he had Steve Wozniak, but then the Apple brand, they had a lot of teams on international scale where everybody was just on one accord. And like what you were saying, I think everybody has to be on the right page in regards to building the brand and also, you know, see, seeing the CEO's vision. That's what's going to actually, you know, excel your personal brand to a whole nother level. Yep. Sam, let's talk about the power of using video. Now, I know a couple of years back, Google bought YouTube for $1.6 billion. So video is hot right now. Can you explain to the audience the power of using video? Should entrepreneurs and business leaders use video to expand their brand? A hundred percent, you know, like, especially in the direct sales space, most people in direct sales, they're very visual. They're very hands-on kind of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to impact people, they don't want to read some 12 page blog. There are people that are very like, Hey, I want to read it. I want to like see the text. There are a lot of people that are like, I want to see their video. There's a lot of people that I want to see just like a meme. I want to see just a simple picture. Um, so I try to hit different uh, modalities of, of, of people's interest. It, and, and, and video has been one of my main things, right? So, you know, I'm putting out YouTube content and putting out Instagram little videos and doing, you know, the things that, and, and it's always value. Like my, my question is, how do, you, how do you go create value in your marketplace? And then the one flaw that I watch is people don't know who they're sending the video to. Does that make sense? Like, it's easy for us to be like, it's going to the universe. I'm like, no, the universe is not going to watch your video. No one's going to watch your video. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm very specific. I'm like door to door salespeople. Now I'm branching out to a little bit more salespeople, you know, but, but for the first three years, it was like, everybody's like, what are you going to be like, why don't this content's so good? Why doesn't it go to everybody? I'm like, like, are you going to change your brand? Are you going to change the name? And I'm like, no, I'm not. Why? Because I'm going to get, you know, Dan Fleishman, a buddy of mine, he's a big marketer. He does the marketing for Ed Milet. He does it for, you know, like Jordan Belfort, a lot of, a lot of like the big brands. Right. Mm -hmm. I asked him, I said, Hey, what would you do if you were me? Would you change the name of the company from D to D to a little bit more sales general? And he goes, no. He's like, I pull out my phone and I could find 50 sales dudes, like the sales gurus. And, and, and I wouldn't know to text, but Arthur, if you ask me who's the best D to D guy, who's the best direct sale guy, I'm gonna pull up one number and it's gonna be yours, Sam. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And he's like, that's a good thing. Like, keep that. You wanna have, when people ask like, who's the best in D to D? And like, they, they can't think of anyone else, but you and mm -hmm. whatever your audience is needs to have that same response. Mm. Absolutely. Every brand has their own brand identity and their own brand DNA. So when your name is mentioned, you know, you want people to have a vivid imagination of what your brand actually stands for and how your brand can actually help them. Like when I think of uh, McDonald's, I think of the Golden Arches. Yeah, you know? they've, they've created a, a brand. Ours is this little infinity house back here. Um, you know, it's that's our that's our that's our icon. It's not mm -hmm. as big and cool as the golden arches, but you know it's it's everywhere. It's like you'll see this pop up all the time. Mm. Sam, let's have a dialogue about money. Now I know money is not value. Money is just a facilitator to do transactions. Can you explain to the audience how would you define money? Money is a vehicle. Yeah, money is a, I think of money as like gasoline, right? It mm. fuels the engine, it fuels the car. Money comes and goes, right? Like you have to refill the tank every so often. Um, but the problem is, is there's many people that won't 
drive because they're like, oh, I don't have any gas money. I don't want to, I, I don't want to waste any gas. Right. And then there's some people that are like, if I'm driving to work to make more money, then obviously I'll have more money to fill gas. Right. Like, mm-hmm. um, so I like money as the accelerator. It's the gas. It's the, it's the vehicle to do things. Like I just did, I invested a lot in Bitcoin a couple of months ago and, you mm-hmm. know, had I not put that money into a v- like Bitcoin is another, it's the vehicle, it's the engine and, and, and the, in the, the avenue of like letting the money work, but the, the money is just like gas. Like you just got it, it's combustible. It's, it's, it's always being recycled. It's always being consumed. Um, but I think that too many people get attached to money. It's like, you know, if somebody said, Hey, Sam, come up with a million bucks right now. I'd be like, okay. And I can go find a million bucks. I can go find where to come up with money. There's, there's an abundance of money out there. Like think trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars out there. Everyone has money at some sense of level, right? And the question is, how, how are you using the money? Like, mm. you know, I think that's where people get stuck is they don't know what to do with the money, how to save that money, how to spend it, where to spend it, what, what resource gives me the best ROIs. Like, so I just think there's a miss, there's a, there's a lack of education on what to do with money as a vehicle, but I think there's a, an abundance of education on how to make money. You know, obviously we teach how to make it, how to create more. Um, but I think that there's a big hole or a void on like, okay, now what? <laughs> like, I got money. Like you said, Steve Jobs had many billions of dollars in his bank account. Like, cool. Like, it doesn't do you anything. Mm. Absolutely. So would you say that money is the byproduct of the value that you uncover? Exactly. Yes. Mm. Wow. It's an it's an, it, you know, back in the day, the, the byproduct was pelts and, 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 and grain and, you know, horses. I will trade you horses. You know, it's, 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 there, there's got to be a reciprocated value. It's the same thing. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like gas. Gas is a, thing it's an, it, it creates the motor move you know absolutely absolutely actually you're talking about the bartering system you know so it's like if, if i got these chickens and you, and you got this land let's barter and yeah. uh let's meet in the middle where we can make things happen we've just made it a little bit more modern mm. than 100 years ago or five a thousand years ago whatever that was <laughs> Sam, from your own experience, what do millionaires and hecto millionaires do on a consistent, regular basis? The unfortunately, broke entrepreneurs they just don't do. Um, I think plan. Um, I think most of them are really good at, at foresight, like seeing farther ahead than just tomorrow. I think most people, what they do is they live for tomorrow, they live for this quarter, they live for this year. Um, and I think that millionaires can see five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, mm. and they can picture themselves as a millionaire. They're thinking about what does the millionaire do? They, they, they put action items in place. They're patient. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people, they're impatient. And so that's why they're doing the, the immediate thing right in front of them, um, because that's how they get their fix. But I think that the millionaire, they're good at planning, they're good at foresight, and then they have the patience enough to stick through a plan long enough, you know, and and stay diligent and and disciplined enough to stay on that plan to actually get there. What ends up happening is most people are like, I want to be a millionaire. And they start on this like three month journey to millionaire. And then all of a sudden life gets tough and they fold while it's unfolding. Like, like while things aren't going their way and it's harder, then they, they cave in and they, they, I don't know, they, they, they just go back to their old self. They go back to like the average mindset, the average person, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that they're not willing to be patient enough along this path to, to really break through kind of the, the compounding effects and, and, and results of, of, of that path, if that makes sense. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Now I had billionaire uh, Jeff Hoffman on my platform And uh, he was actually conveying value to my audience about entrepreneurs should always build a business that they can sell. But from your brand, do you feel as though that 
you would be in the process of building your business that you can sell for millions of dollars down the line? Yeah. And that, and that's, I would have been very conscious of that. You know, in today's social media world, there's been a lot of just solopreneurs, right? The brand is the person. Nobody's going to buy a person. Like, you know what I mean? Because if that person gets hurt, that person decides to just kind of go on a hiatus, midlife crisis, whatever. What's the reliability for that? Um, you know, I've had a very intention around this isn't the Sam Taggart University. This isn't the Sam Taggart like empire. This is D to D experts. And I now have a team we call the Avengers that, you know, there's five experts that, that go out and travel and train. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a marketing expert that I help like obviously move the brand, but I'm not your best consultant. There's better ones that are doing a great job out there. And, you know, then I have a recruiting department that it's recurring. I have, you know, a million dollars of reoccurring revenue that comes in every year um, just from our subscription stuff. We have three different technologies that we do that have reoccurring revenue as well. Um, so I look for avenues to say, okay, are my books clean? Are my profit margin, my EBITDA good? Am I, am I too stuck on me? Or is it like, no, if I was here or not here, if I took a month off right now, my company would grow by 10% month over month, like no joke. And um, it would, it would still grow because I have sales teams. I have marketing teams, leads that like that customers. I don't even know who they are, but if mm. all customers, all things had to funnel to me, it's hard for an acquisition to happen. Hmm. So would you say that happy customers are loyal customers? They keep coming back to you wanting your product or your service? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, and also a higher paying customer. Like we, it's so funny. We track all this stuff. Like we have the analytics between, you know, somebody buys my book. Then they start listening to my podcast. Then they come to an event. You know, they spent 10 bucks. Then they spent 50 bucks. Then they spent 2000 bucks. And now they're spending a hundred grand. You know, we, we, we found that we take one customer and deliver value. We can, you know, mine that customer for six figures plus down the road. And so we've got to treat them as if they're a six figure client day one, you know, it's kind of like, we got to see them all as potential, you know, six figure deals. Mm. So you created your own intellectual property platform with, you do your own live events, live seminars. You also created your own books. And then you also got your own podcast show. Then you also, basically, you kind of like put your audience into like a funnel system. And like what you were saying earlier, it's good for entrepreneurs and business owners to develop processes and systems where the business can actually function without you currently being there on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep. Mm. Sam, I appreciate you coming on my show today because the whole premise of my show is to educate entrepreneurs and business owners on a national, international scale that they can live the life that they truly desire, but they have to be open to these important principles. So I don't like what I see what's on the news. So I create my own news. Love that. Sam, can you explain to the audience exactly where they can find you? Yeah, so you can go to Instagram at the Sam Taggart. DDD experts as well. Um, you can go to YouTube, DDD experts. You can go to um, the DDD experts.com. Um, that's probably like where you can find the majority of our stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, just my podcast, DDD podcast. Um, but basically, just put in D2D experts and a bunch of stuff will pop up on Google. And uh, yeah, we, we'd love to help and support anybody with. I have a free book that, that you go get ABC to closing or. Um, you know, come to one of our events, like, you know, our business boot camps every month. We have DDD Con coming up here in January. Um, and we do that every year. We have sales summits. We have recruiting summits. We have all sorts of really cool stuff going on. So just come and uh, so I, I just invite to schedule a call to see where we can help you with one of our coaches. And they would, uh, they would walk through like, hey, if we're a good fit, then awesome. If we're not, then great. Like, we're, we're, we're in the business to help you. So. Mm. So everyone that's listening and watching, follow Sam Tagger. You hear the passion that came through his voice on my show today. Sam, I wrote down some powerful words, 10 being the highest and one being the lowest. So you can rate them in your own influential way. Are you ready? Yep. 
accountability. How many words are we doing? I want to be fair. 10, 10 the highest, one the lowest. Uh, 10. Perseverance. Nine. Branding. Six. Marketing. Seven. Family. Ten. Value. Ten. Building great relationships. Ten. Money. Three. Wealth. Ten. Health. Ten. Intellectual property. Seven. Happiness. Eleven. Self-worth. Ten. Financial literacy. Six. Live events. Ten. Foundation. Eleven. Love. Ten. All right, that was good. That was real good. Sam, I love reading books. And unfortunately, reading is a lost art today. Can you explain to the audience, what books does Sam like to read? And what books do you recommend for the audience to read? My number one most recommended book is Outwitting the Devil by mm. Napoleon Hill. Um, I really like The Compound Effect. I really liked uh, for businesses traction that's like the best entrepreneur book in my opinion mm. um, and talking about sharon lecter and uh darren hard hardy that's the oh, yeah, yeah. and then uh traction is gina wickman uh, mm. and yeah, those would be kind of my main ones my uh selling selling book if you're in sales i like uh it's like uh psychology of selling by brian tracy that's kind of my most recommended starter selling book Mm -hmm. um man there's hundreds of books the, 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 it's always the hardest question to answer i'm like well tell me the problem and i'll diagnose you with a book like you know <laughs> so anyway but yeah like tony robbins said i saw tony robbins one time and he's like readers are leader or leaders are readers and mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of changed my paradigm i was like well you know we're in such a busy fast-paced world i'm like that's the problem sit down and read a good book mm -hmm. so. wow now Warren Buffett and his business partner Charlie Munger, they are value investors. Do you sell do you see yourself and your brand uh later down the line being a value investor? Yeah, our whole business is built off of this book um by Steve Schwartzman. He started Blackstone mm. and it's called Whatever It Takes. And the whole concept is to either consult partner or buy companies. And that's kind of our business model. Mm, wow. So you see yourself actually, uh, Brian, buying profitable businesses that generates a lot of revenue? Yep, very mm. much so. Wow. Sam, what mistakes are you seeing that entrepreneurs are making in the direct sales industry, because you kind of remind me of the new Dan Kennedy. And uh, I know Dan Kennedy, he's actually specialized in direct sales early in his career. Do you actually see that entrepreneurs are making mistakes in regards to uh, yes. making the customer feel comfortable where they want their product or their service when they're going door to door? Yeah, um, I think well, kind of two part answer. So yes, I think people are afraid that customers still feel uncomfortable going door to door or direct selling like cold calling. I think that, you know, they, they're like, oh, it's 2020. Like, why would people still be doing this? And I think that they actually superimpose an insecurity, which is a mistake. Mm -hmm. And number two is, I believe most, a lot of businesses right now with how much stuff is online, um, and, you know, buy this free course and learn how to be, make a million dollars with this funnel and, you know, make a million dollars by clicking these couple buttons. And it's devaluing the element of hard work and, 
and taking this um it's distracting honestly like i watch people go six 12 months where it's like man you're still broke and you're still trying to create this magic funnel mm. and yeah i mean that stuff works like i i spend money on marketing i'm not like against i'm not i'm a millennial i'm not dumb i know how to use social media um but what i don't like is we're we're actually taking away this like hunter work ethic hard work principle and and and, and a lot of entrepreneurs are just trying to get the easy route mm. and i think that's a common mistake mm. how do you feel about entrepreneurs and business owners incorporating key performance indicators in their companies it's, it's, it's a, a must i mean mm. every every role in your company should have a key performance indicator like every employee should weekly have to report something um you know and sometimes it's easy to report sales numbers how many you sell how many you collect you know like how many got installed whatever that is mm. um but it's how do you get creative and say your admin what's their kpi your marketing guy what's his kpi what's your content creators kpi you know what i mean like mm -hmm. how do you create a score and every week hold them accountable so i have a whole master kpi tracker in the company that every week on wednesday so today they have to have it updated by 12 and so if i show up and that stuff's not updated it's like what do you like do i do you work here like is it like is there a problem and then every friday night they owe me a loom video so the loom video mm -hmm. is a screen recording of five minutes and i have a loom video checklist so i give each employee their checklist so i say go over this 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 and this in this loom video so i feel like i'm updated on what you've been doing this week and it's like a more project-based kpi that makes them accountable to like did you move the needle like did mm -hmm. you are you getting projects progressing and so most of my key players all have to send in Friday night a loom video and then Wednesday everybody has a KPI they got to update. Mm. Now you built your book of business to the ultimate level and I love immersing myself into lifelong learning. How do you feel about entrepreneurs and business owners developing their own brainstorming groups? And do you think brainstorming groups is very effective in today's industry. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I don't know why I just want to go out. So I have three masterminds that I run. Um, and I've learned more than I probably taught running these. And some of them are elite salespeople and sales managers. Some of them are elite um, CEOs. And some of them are like massive, like company owners. And um, they, uh, it's so cool to watch. We call it the third lens. Mm -hmm. You have one lens of what you see. There's one lens of what I see and the third lens is what we all see together. Mm -hmm. And there's a collective learning that takes place when there's an intention to a group of powerful, committed, intentional people. Um, and I've watched some beautiful co-creation happen by facilitating some of these experiences with the masterminds. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. They say it takes a village to raise a child. So, you know, it definitely takes a village to actually, you know, build your business because, you know, the right people build businesses, but the business don't build the people. Love that. Mm. Wow. Sam, I see a lot of entrepreneurs where they are actually, you know, mastering, you know, online marketing as well as offline marketing. How do you feel about market growth? versus market innovation i like to be you know I, I, my dad was an entrepreneur and he always said what's your competitive advantage mm -hmm. and i think too often people kind of go for the low-hanging fruit instead of 
pioneering or trailblazing through innovation. And, you know, I think that's one of the big reasons we've been successful is I blazed a new trail. Like I, I, there wasn't people doing what I was doing and I'm all about what's your uniques, what's your, your competitive advantage, what's your, you know, so, so making sure that if you're going to take a marketing approach or a, you know, create something online, offline, whatever, keep that in mind. What's your, what's your, uh, competitive advantage. Mm. Sam, when I'm having a conversation with an entrepreneur or a business professional, how would I know there'd be good prospects for you in regards to what you are currently passionate about? Anybody looking to sell more and like boost their sales morale, culture, increase sales performance, mm. recruit more guys because they're trying to like find talent. You know, recruiting is one of the biggest underserved like topics in my opinion and i think you know like you just said it's it's the people that make up the business mm -hmm. and well most people struggle at actually attracting and enrolling the right people to their company mm -hmm. and then the last one is just leadership and business strategy i think that we have a very unique approach to how we strategize compensation plans to you know leading your people running your sales meetings to you know really this leadership element that is lacking. I feel like we don't have a sales rep problem or abundance of sales rep. It's not a millennial or a Gen Z problem. What it is, it's, it's a leadership problem. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a huge element of what we teach. So anybody in those three categories that are looking to scale would be a really good candidate to get on a coaching call with us and see if we, if we have the right tools and systems and events or coaching or consulting program that would custom fit to upping your game mm. sam what do you like to do for fun me i'm an ultimate fun junkie <laughs> um everything outdoors mountain bike snowboard ski uh run uh every sport anything with a ball um like i'm on a like our team has a basketball league to mm. play pickleball to um, I, I like music. I, I compose on the piano and the guitar. I like to dance. I like to, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fun junkie would probably be the, uh, the answer to that. Oh, wow. So you're very skillful at the piano. So would you say that you're going to be the next Elton John? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe who knows? I actually, I'm trying to work on, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm finishing a CD right now. So I'm, I'm going to take it and record it and We'll see. We'll see if it goes anywhere. Who knows? It's fun. I like to, um, you know, I like work. I, I have three, three beautiful daughters and spend mm -hmm. a lot of time with them. And um, so, yeah. Wow. Are you married? No. Okay. Do you think you want to tell them that one day? Um, one day, one day. <laughs> I was, I, I'm, 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 I'm on my break. I uh, was married eight years and, um need, need some uh sam time mm. wow sam you're a very smart man mm. this is a a fascinating interview sam do you have any last pearls of wisdom for the audience i would say you know i i, I was with a friend and they were like, Hey, I've got this business idea. And it was a clothing company. And I was like, well, what's the name of it? And she goes, I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to tell me the name. I was like, I'm not going to steal your clothing line. Like, you know, and, but I, I then realized it wasn't about me stealing her idea. It was about, she was embarrassed of the idea. And I go, mm -hmm. interesting. And I said, well, why? And I, and then I was like, how many company future entrepreneurs, business owners have these ideas, have a business, have something, and they're embarrassed to share it with the world. And they're scared to just put it out into existence. I'm like, girl, I'm here to help you. And you won't even say what it is. And I go, that is so common. Maybe that not, not as blunt, not as obvious as what she did. But I go, I watch business owners and salespeople and management and all these amazing people hold their concepts to the chest and say, 
nobody needs to know. And that's where it'll always remain. It will always stay on your chest and never come to fruition until you start manifesting this and taking action. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's a lot of people that unfortunately they passed away with their dreams trapped inside of them. So what's in you must come out of you so the world can experience the real you. Exactly. Mm. Sam, I'd like to thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate me and the audience worldwide about direct sales and the power of true entrepreneurship. I gladly appreciate it. You are a gift from God. Thank you. You too, Arthur. Appreciate the time. Can you explain to the audience one more time exactly where they can find you? And also, can you explain the value about your upcoming event you got coming up next year in January in the beautiful Utah? Yeah, so dddcon.com, um, and that is January 8th and 9th in Salt Lake City, Utah, with 20 amazing, amazing speakers at a live event. This is not virtual. And, you know, anybody that's looking for personal development, leadership, recruiting strategies, sales systems, training, finance, real estate, like content will be delivered on that. And I would definitely recommend it. It, it, it is an event of a lifetime. I don't know lineups that strong. David Goggins, John Maxwell, Brad Lee, Tim Story, Hal Elrod, who wrote The Miracle Morning, Travis Chapel, John Marone, Mike Chizeski. Like there are so many amazing entrepreneurs and speakers at that event. And the network there is business owners and high level earners and just connecting with like-minded people like you said is is a beautiful opportunity to co-create and break through some of your mental limitations so dddcon.com that would be my one thing i'd for sure recommend to go check out if not follow me on instagram at the sam taggart or at the dd or at ddd experts and now is that a two-day event two-day event yep now how many people do you have at your events so during the COVID, last year we had 2,000 people. This year we've capped it at 500. So we only have 200 more tickets left. So we've already sold 200 tickets or 300 tickets. Um, so 200 seats left. So go get your, your, and whenever this goes live, it's probably less. So um, 500 people, it's capped because of COVID and uh, it's going to be a very intimate experience. Mm. And uh, when I, actually, when I get off of here and uh, finish this, uh, powerful interview i let gordon know and then i'll connect y'all too and uh he loves what you're doing but i think it'd be a wonderful conference call and uh i know y'all could be actually be value creators towards one another thank you thank you to everyone that's listening and watching right now i highly recommend get involved with the phenomenal sam taggart go to his website the d2 experts.com he has incredible content that could take your mindset and your business to a whole nother level. But remember, you have to implement what you learn and go to his website and actually sign up for his upcoming event, which ought to be a phenomenal New Year's uh, presentation. Yeah, Everybody can get involved. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So uh, it'd be a two day event. He's going to have uh, David Goggins, uh, Tim Story, all the greats. Uh, John Maxwell, all the grace is actually going to be his phenomenal event. And uh, they're going to deliver a lot of phenomenal value as well as Sam Taggart. Now, Sam, would you be actually sharing the stage with the other business leaders? Yep, I'll be there. I'll be speaking. All right, absolutely. So remember that the strongest asset that each and every one of you have is your brain and what you think about it, what you take action on that will become your reality and your mentality creates your reality. May God bless each and every one of you. And bye for now. Thank you, Sam. I really appreciate you coming on my platform. Thank you. Appreciate you. Have a pleasant day, everyone. See ya. See ya. Thank you. That was great. Oh, that was you. awesome. That was awesome. I got to get you coming back on my platform and uh, convey value to my audience so we can get more in, in deep and yeah, we can no, talk more about direct sales. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully your your audience likes it. Well, um, what's what's the show called again? I want to go, I'm going to make sure I subscribe and everything. 
Oh, uh, PowerfulInterviews.com, and then we have uh, NationalDiversified.com. How many have you done? How many interviews have you done? Oh, I've done over 200. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. Counting. That's cool. Well, I'm excited to, to hear it go live, and I'll share it with my audience. Just send me some of the assets or whatever, and I'll make sure I share it. Okay, I, I'll definitely send you the link. And then uh, I'll let Gordon know we can, uh, you know, set up that conference call. But uh, yeah, put uh, me on a group thread and or an email or a group text or something, and mm-hmm. we'll get something on the calendar. That'd be awesome. And you want me to set that up through your assistant? Yeah, that'd be great. Do you have her number or email? For me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, my email yeah. is Arthur, A R T H U R, Robinson, R O B I N S O N, King. K-I-N-G at gmail.com. Cool. And what was Gordon's last name again? Uh, Gordon Bazaar, B-I-Z-A-R. And his, cool. and the website is nationaldiversified.com. That's uh, cool. his private equity company. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I really want to start networking a lot more with the private equity groups because <coughs> I just sent one private equity company, 13 different solar companies to start interviewing for a big roll-up acquisition. And mm-hmm. I started to realize that we are a great feeder and or opportunity for some private equity. Oh, absolutely. I'll let Gordon, well, that's his space. And uh, he shared a stage with a lot of powerful people. And uh, he also helped a lot of entrepreneurs where they actually took their uh, businesses public. Cool. That's his, yeah, that's his entrepreneurial space. So he loves what you're doing. and. Uh, you know, he wants to see if uh, y'all can actually uh, create value and, uh, you know, maybe eventually y'all can work together. Love that. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. So I appreciate the connection. Okay, because he's actually in California. So that's like three hours behind me. So what I do, I'll send some dates and times to uh, your powerful assistant and uh, let's see if it correlates with your schedule. And let's uh, make it happen. Okay, appreciate it. You're familiar with GoToWebinar, correct? Yep. Okay. So I'll let Gordon know, and then uh, he, he'd be looking forward to uh, meeting you. He's, he's one of your Raven fans. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Thank this you. This is going to be exciting because uh, Gordon is actually 75 years old, but he's, as far as like the entrepreneurial space and private equity, he's like at the the, high, uh, the top of uh, what he specializes in. I love that. I love that. It looks like he bought, I'm looking at his website, he bought a home automation company. I do a lot of businesses with home automation. Yes, absolutely. So. absolutely. If you look at his uh, his bio, he has a 50 a 50-year success track record in uh, business acquisitions. And uh, he's done a lot of work with uh, Tony Robbins and uh, Jay Abraham and a lot of other business leaders. Actually, the business leaders that you know, they actually know him as well. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I got to jump off, but okay, well, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll, okay. we'll talk soon. Talk soon, Sam. Appreciate you. See ya.